The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 20, Nasdaq's flat, S&P's up 1, gold also flat, 1480 an ounce. We had silver down seven, uh, four cents, seventeen dollars seven cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up forty eight cents, sixty dollars sixty nine cents. Light sweet crude's gonna looks like it's gonna go for that uh, the top of that uh, range uh, the day that the Saudis got their uh, stuff uh, bombed. Sixty dollars, the new norm in in, in yeah. crude, not bad. Yeah. Notes and bonds. You get the ten year note uh, up three ticks, trading one twenty eight seventeen. Thirty year up seven at. Seven ticks at 157.02 and King Dollar. King Dollar up 137 ticks, trading 97.156. Euro is at 111. The yen is out here at 109.58 and the pound is at 131 to 1 US dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of swim as we do each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, outstanding program. If you want to understand the options market, you want to understand strategies in the options market. You want to understand futures. We're kicking into the first of the year. Everyone, you know, whatever you think you want to do in the first of the year, there's plenty of people that I suspect into the equity market, new into the equity market, new into the futures market, new into the option market. Great time to basically listen to the program. Get, get your head, ready. Get your head wrapped around. 2020. Hey, listen, man, in the last 20 years, all these businesses have changed dramatically, in, including the options market. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, it's beginning to look a lot like an end of the year rally, guys. Yeah. Oh, boy. Because right? they just can't, they're just having trouble hurting them here. Even with Boeing's news this morning, you know, futures are still in the green. It's pretty amazing here how resilient this market is right now. And it's just bad news isn't bad news, and good news is good news. Kevin, yesterday morning, right? So let's say, I don't know, 7 o'clock Eastern time or whatever, right? I see Boeing, right? And I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying, there's no way the Dow's going to be up today, right? It's like wrong, okay? Because yep. the it's it, amazing, it, and that just showed, folks. I mean, that's the bottom line. Yeah. And, you know, at, at at the peak yesterday, Boeing was putting 99 negative points into the Dow Industrials. And it was probably still right. 100 to 150 at that time. It was, right. it was, right. you know. So it showed that there's underlying strength that's there. Yeah, and yeah, you know, big numbers, and and it just, you know, for just remember, as the human eyes on this market get less and less and less. You know what doesn't take a day off? Machines. Yes. Over the Christmas holidays. And we learned that a year ago, December 24th. That's so true, man. Yeah. Right? Low volume right. and low attendance in the market. All the machines are still there, and sometimes they feed off themselves. Well, last year you saw it on the downside. Yeah. We'll see what happens, you know, Kevin. as we get closer and closer to the end of the year because... They don't take a day off. They don't get holidays. They, they they flip that switch, and they're watching the market and trading on momentum. So yeah. it should be pretty, you know, it, it, you know, everyone should take time off and be with their family and do other things. But you should be keeping one eye on the markets and what they're doing for sure. Yeah, you make a great point. I mean, uh, it's phenomenal, folks, okay, just as Kevin said, right? The bottom line is that they took off downtown last year. If, in fact, you get any momentum going, <laughs> right. you know, it's, it's different. You and I saying, oh, the momentum's going in. You've been in those markets. I've been in those markets. And you, sometimes you can't believe it, folks, that you can just hit anything and, you know, it's going up. I mean, that, that's, that's, you know, I've seen it. Sure. And with the machines, they're not sitting there like we're next to each other. They're not sitting there. I'm looking at you, Tommy, saying, I can't believe this, man. You see what's going on? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're participating. <laughs> exactly. The machines aren't talking. Yeah. They're just knowing that, okay, we're still making money. We're going to hammer it. We're going to hammer it and hammer it until we don't. Which is, it's, right. which is, you know, like how, you know what's interesting, Kevin? Like how are they going to teach that in school now, right? right? I mean, you know, because, you know, when you're there, it's one thing, but, I think it's a huge point, man, because, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's real. Especially when we just saw it last year, right? Yes. All you have to do is look at a chart 
of last year's fourth quarter and December for that case. Just cut it down to, to December. And the question was, which stock should I have bought when it was down there? It didn't matter. All of them I know. were I know. down, right? Know. Yes. But, but that didn't make it any easier to get in and put money into the market in late December last year. You got rewarded for it. And I can honestly say that most of the greatest buys and sells of my career were at times when my inner voice was saying, this might hurt a little bit. Right. This, right. One, this one might leave a mark. Right. And, and because you're buying into, you know, panic. Yes. But those are usually some of the best ones. I've, I, you know, yep. my career has told me that. Yeah. But yep. it doesn't feel good when you're doing it. No, it, 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 it would have been tough on December 24th, Kevin, if somebody yeah. told you when the S&P was floating with 2300 that it was possible would be at almost 3300 <laughs> by the end of the, the yeah. next calendar year, which is we're now above 3200 in the S&P. I mean, remarkable. And you know, the percentage numbers, Tommy, everyone's going to be talking about the percentage winners this year. I discount a good portion of that because of what happened in the fourth quarter sure. of last year. Yeah. You know, if you take that move out. Right. Then the returns are relatively normal. Yeah, they're, they're not outlandish. Right. So, you know, it, it gives you a little smoothing factor. No, you're exactly right. Numbers. Because we just pulled back, and this isn't even the high, but just going back to September, you were at almost 2,900 in the S and P's. So now you're only talking about 300 S and P points above it, right. which is almost 10 percent. We're ballparking. That brings you a know. little perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure yeah, does. It does. It's important, definitely. It does. There's no doubt about that, man. Yeah. And, you know, we'll see. What's so intriguing, you know, is that we got all these stocks at all-time highs. Not all of them, but many Enough of them. Of them. Sure. Many of them, exactly. The important ones, too. And, you know, Amazon is still just laying yeah. down there. So it's going to be like, right. okay, man, you know, uh, we were talking about, we, we know Walmart broke out, Target broke out. I mean, maybe they're hitting them a little in, in the yeah. um, sales. But, you yeah, know. the recovery that brick and mortar has made against Amazon, yes. who would have thought? Tom and Tommy, six months ago, that the best pairs trade in this market might have been buying brick and mortar and selling Amazon. I yeah. know. I, that would have been a tough one to to justify to to a, to a risk management position. Yeah, I still wouldn't do it, even though you know I like the trade. <laughs> yeah. you know, do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. but I mean, you guys are talking about we're at all time highs, but look at all the stocks that have some room. Netflix is significantly yeah. off its highs. You, you guys were talking about Amazon. Right. Boeing is now what one hundred and thirty dollars off its high. Right. So some of these stocks have some room, that's for sure. And what I was just talking about with Oliver Rinnick on was, wonder if the European economy starts to recover. Right. And what if China starts to seriously recover right. and firm up? Right. Right. Uh, then you're talking about the United States <laughs> melt up, not a rally. Sure. No, I, if the market what? starts to fire, we'll go with them. I, I think you get action there, man, because the, the, you know, the European economy has been down for so long. Their currencies right. have been down. And we were talking, you know, about uh, oil last week. I started thinking, I says, man, this oil thing, it could have to do with the dollar. You know, the dollar only has to come off five points, man, and these commodities will go big time, man. And five points is not the end of the world for the dollar. You yeah. know what I mean? We're at yeah. 97. 92 is not going to kill the dollar. You know what I mean? Still time to ruin your year, guys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. <I> like <laughs> and folks... Right here, 45 minutes from now. You don't want to get your year ruined. You want to find risk. Great program. <laughs> Kevin, you have a great one. Safe one. We look forward to the program in 45 minutes. Great talking to you guys. Have a good one. You too, you too Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 42, Nasdaq's up 5, S&P's up 2.5. We were just talking about Go Amazon, so let's yep. see where Amazon is trading right now, because this is quite a story. 17 and change, I'd say, where it's been yeah. for, like, right, for a, while. a long right. time. 1781. Okay. So up 12 bucks. They've had some 18 and change yep. highs in there, but, um, you know, I'm really talking about, really, this whole run here, right? Yep. Going back July. all the way to July especially when you compare it to what the market's done over that time. No doubt. And just before we jump over the story, because it is interesting, we were just talking to Kevin even go back like a couple of years. Um, I mean, you really go back. That was the ultimate high, I believe, 2050. You almost got back up there. Yeah, 2035. So 2018 was the high, actually. That's intriguing. Yes, right. It never quite made it back. Yeah. I know. And that's why I said it's been a long time considering what the market has done, right? You yeah. go back to basically we're sitting in June of 18 okay. um, where you were hanging out, you know, right? 17 and change. Right. And you're now 15, 16, a year and, and a half. And Amazon doesn't pay a dividend. Yeah. Um, and you had some volatility, man, where you really had oh, to yeah. stomach. And this is where, you know, you want to talk about yearly gains through Amazon? Yeah, you're, you're going to look like you were a pro here when you went from 1307 to almost 1800 But that just got you back to where you were in November right. of that year. Now, how about uh, this story talk about making phenomenal. some headlines? So if you heard it yesterday, uh, Amazon, just talk about a time to do it. December 16th, I nine know. days out from Christmas. Can you imagine being the executive in the FedEx office and saying, uh... We have Dave Clark on the call for you. He's the, let's see, with Global Logistics Chief. And Dave says, uh, I got bad news for you, man. We're not going to allow any of our third-party sellers to ship through you for the entirety of forever. Right. Um, so, of course, you saw FedEx shares down dramatically yesterday. And it goes it goes to talking about how, quote-unquote, they call him the sniper man. So it, quite a job, Global Logistics Chief. If, if Amazon is anything, they might just be a logistics company in terms of the way that they are so reliable. For sure. And it he's is, been there since 2013 in this job. Yeah. And that's just in this job, too, right? Right. Is that, was he there? Because, um, so let's say, so when he first came on, he had an early habit of lurking in the shadows of the warehouses and just looking for people not doing their jobs, man, which earned him the name of their sniper. They did come in and look for people, you know, slacking throughout the warehouse. He speaks in a monotone, hard to read, but the message is clear enough. 
He wants his underlings to know he'll let little stand in the way of ensuring the customers get their orders on time. FedEx, boy, they sure found out about that yesterday. And so I had kind of forgotten about 2013. So they go into here how I guess that must have been a heck of a season for it them. Was. And I, it's amazing right. that we're talking about six years now. Right. And so I do kind of forget it. Jeez, Amazon's come a far way since where they were and then. And so just months after he'd taken over, they had foul weather, logistical bottlenecks, derailed holiday deliveries, and forced Amazon to issue refunds to irate shoppers, unprecedented setback for a company that puts its customers at the center of everything. And so determined to prevent recurrence, Clark has spent billions and billions of dollars on building a sprawling delivery operation that includes a worldwide network, network of robot-filled warehouses, fleets of planes, delivery vans, and hundreds of thousands of workers. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? Yeah. Boy, oh, boy. So as of August, according to Morgan Stanley, Amazon was delivering 46% of U.S. packages bought on its platform and is now shipping 2.5 billion packages a year. Compared with three billion for FedEx and four point seven for UPS, I mean that's amazing. They're right on par, man. They're, oh, yeah. they're number three, and guess what? They're growing. They're, they're going to be over exactly. there in no time. Especially when I wonder how this number is going to change, considering yesterday's news. Right, right. The three billion yeah, you're talking for about. FedEx. So some analysts believe, as I would agree, that the delivery machine Clark has built could one day become an entirely new business and eventually end UPS's and FedEx's kind of duop duopoly. Yes. Um, and you know it's wild, folks. If you listen yesterday, it was pretty cool. Dave White was complaining about his Amazon chip runs on the air. Okay. And the it he, he had four different shipments, I, I believe. That you know, bottom line is that they weren't there on time. Okay. They couldn't find them. It's important, man. And yeah. Right after that, right. So picture this: he gets off the air at uh, two, right? No, three. Right yes. after that, that's when this came out. <laughs> And turn around all right, simultaneously with sure. was coming out that FedEx was firing. Um, I mean, Amazon Amazon's was firing, firing FedEx. FedEx. It yeah. was like, wow. Yeah. You know? I mean, they probably realized, man, this is uh, probably the busiest nine days of their entire year. Amazon. Right. And they realized that, you know what? Um, third party sellers are, are beholden to Amazon and they get to oh, make yeah. the rules. And so they said, you know what? They're not going to be happy about it. But. Put up or shut up, man. You want to sell on Amazon, start, start shipping tomorrow on UPS, right. or, or don't right. sell your product. And guess what? Right. There's going to be other people that pick up the slack if you don't want to sell it, man. Right. Right. Um, so it's cool here that, you know, in terms of just what they talk about, in terms of the toll might make executives more cautious, not Bezos and Clark, grappling with the stepped-up competition from Walmart and Target, or Amazon earlier this year committed to deliver millions of products in just one day yeah so clark must honor that pledge during a holiday shopping season that's almost a week shorter than it was last year all the while keeping workers safe and customers happy he's mostly succeeded for the past two decades during which holiday season sales have soared 30 fold to 144 billion that's holiday sales Holy alone cow. um yeah so pretty remarkable, man. Uh, just the the remarkable. So he grew up with Amazon. First job there in 1999. Quickly rising through the Look ranks. Look at that. Yeah. He's 47. Young guy to be in that control, you know. But you've been with the company for going on 20 years, man. Started there when he was only 27. He's among more than 20 senior executives on the coveted S team. And next year will be take on a dis added responsibility of running the brick and mortar operations, including Whole Foods and Amazon Go. So it looks like he is a trusted wow. trusted deputy for sure. That's and as I said, look, Bezos gets him, man. I say it. Right. They might be a logistics company. Right. So Bezos is going to have one of his top henchmen, right. top hench women in that role. Because just, if you drop that ball, man, yeah. there's no other ball to drop. There That's isn't. it. There yeah, isn't. pretty cool. And let's just pull up. What is uh, can FedEx worry? Because FedEx was down. And then I heard it, it, it had a little bit of a pop, though, yeah, right? Yeah, it was two bucks up at your news. Yeah, oh. <laughs> and now it's back down. That's, yeah, can you go I, just to see one because it did open, popped like two bucks right off the bat, and then it's been trailing off. Right. Oh yeah, man, it doesn't know. make sense that it's going to trade higher after that. I mean, oh my God, I mean, remarkable that they are a forty-three billion dollar company, and what do we just see? They they ship about three billion. Yep. Um, packages. Yes. And Amazon's like right on their heels. Now here's what's interesting. They got earnings today. <laughs> oh, is that cool? How about that earnings call? You want to be on the executive that has to field oh. questions about whether you're going to be able to compete with Amazon when they literally just kicked you to the curb? Good luck to whoever that's, has that's to take cool. that, that call because 5.15 Eastern time earnings. 
boy, oh boy, talk about being in the hot seat. Oh, that's, that's yeah. about as intense as you can get. Takes and some, you don't have many day, hours to get ready for it. That's the real panic. I mean, right. talk right. about... Uh, but you know what? They should have gotten it done, man. Because if they're oh, not yeah. getting things delivered on time, they should have realized that, guess what? Amazon's coming for their lunch anyway, so if you're dropping the ball, man. Right. And I'm sure you don't just call someone up and fire them. They probably had conversations the last... I'm sure month. they got... You, you know, like, hey, I'm what's, gonna going, call on? A what's warning, going on? What's going but on? But something right. to say, right. Right. you know... Right. There was there was something to say. Listen, and we will cut you off ASAP if you are not getting it done. And I hope they took those threats seriously, man, because they got that call. They got that call. They man. got it. Oof. Dow Dow Industrials up 38. Nasdaq up three. S and P's up three. Tommy and I come right back. Stay right there, folks. The TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale is back. For two weeks only, we're offering the largest bonuses of the year on all Tiger Dollar purchases. Normally, you can get a 10 to 20% bonus on your purchase, but for the Tiger Dollar Holiday Special, we've doubled the normal bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars can be used for all TFNN newsletters, products, or services, are fully transferable, and never expire. If you're a current TFNN newsletter subscriber, then this is a great time to buy Tiger Dollars and apply them to all your future transactions for instant added savings. And if you're considering signing up for any TFNN newsletters, webinars, or products in 2020, then get up to a 40% bonus now before this sale ends Sunday, December 22nd. For all the details and to purchase your Tiger Dollars with up to a 40% bonus, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 33. Nasdaq's up 4. S&P's are up 2.5. And uh, let's just go over it. I want, I'm curious. I forgot what Boeing was doing when you had pulled that up. It was down a percent or something, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so. Like a 1%. Yesterday it was about 4 or 5%. Yeah. It looked 322. Well, it's close. It's, it's at the lower end of the range for sure, yeah. right? But it's, it's kind of hanging still in that area. It is. And 
It's just huge numbers. I, I saw one article today saying it's still going to cost them like a billion dollars a month oh, yeah. to like maintain what I've heard. They have like like 400 planes now that they've because they've been it's 400. Yeah, that's yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah. I mean, you gotta those those planes aren't tiny to store, man. No, it's let alone so, 50 billion dollars of planes right that they've produced and they can't sell. Right. That's a lot of money, man. So you get we hit 320 today. 319 is one level. The okay. next one's 292. Yeah. 290. And I would say 300 is uh, an important, just uh, yeah. that ball, you know, just a now, main big number. Where do you see this, folks? This, this, this number here, when you bring up, so that's technically, when you bring this up fundamentally, when I was on the TD network yesterday, okay. we were going over this, they were interviewing me, and this number is hard to comprehend too, okay? So picture this, okay? 2019, they're saying by the end of the year, 79.6 billion. Okay, right? revenue, yep. And then revenue is profit. See, uh, profit is sixteen dollars, right? You went to twenty eighteen though. The, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Seventy four cents. Yeah. Okay. So it disappears basically. Yeah. yeah. Now watch this, folks. Okay. They're saying that in twenty twenty, in fiscal year twenty twenty. Yes. They're going to go from let's say eighty billion. Yep. To one hundred and twenty billion. Not bad. And of course, that that's going to be the delivery of the airplane. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's still a hard number to comprehend. And we're, you know, 20 days away from yeah. 2020. Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen continually that they've been overly optimistic. Yeah. So now the other side of that is, is even if they get it approved by April, I mean, we just said that those, those planes, there's $50 billion in planes that are done, produced, ready, yeah, the, sitting in the hangars, just waiting to be shipped out. $50 billion of product. Uh, talk about a product problem in terms of, uh, right. you know, and then the cost to store that. And, you know, just and, all. And what all also there. ends up happening, what I, what I don't know is that when this happened before, not just a Boeing, but when there was a big recession, what was happening is that the airlines, folks, stored planes in the desert so that they don't go bad. Okay. Okay. So it's like they're, they're storing some of these planes. I'm sure some of them are in the desert, too. But these planes here are also right in Seattle. They, they, they Yesterday on the way in, there was an analyst saying that he saw the pitches pile up in teacher. Well, Seattle has bad weather. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? So it's intriguing yeah. as to how long the planes are going to be stored, where they're stored, and, yeah. you know, how that yeah. comes down. And that's, I think that just speaks to why they, they're, they, that's probably part of that, where it's costing them a billion dollars a month to store them, even. You know, like, yeah. even when they haul production, these planes. That'd be a good contract These get, planes, right? oh, man, right? <laughs> there are, uh, I mean, I don't know the fundamentals of the airplane business, the, the, the airline business, but, um, I mean, these planes are in, you know, rotation for decades. Oh, yeah. So I don't think it's that big of a deal, though. If they sit on the tarmacs, they have to service them, though. You know, they have to clean them just like they probably would another plane, yeah. for sure. But they're built to be able to fly in practically snowstorms if, you know, um, safety, you know, making sure that it's safe. But it's remarkable kind of what they do, weather, to put it. Yeah, well, we'll see where this, you know. It's interesting, at, at you know. The, at the lower end, it's this consolidation, it's going to be a big deal. You know, the other side of that is, man, if you're going to be a long-time buyer, long-term buyer, right. it's got to be a good spot at some point because there's only two airline companies in the whole world, folks. There's Airbus and there's Boeing, and, and the world needs air, airplanes. Yes, no, listen, there's no, there's no doubt. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it was a good deal at... 374. <laughs> I don't know if, if it's a good deal it, at 391. If you liked it at 374, right. you're going to love it at 324. Right, you know? right, yeah. right. It, it's... And you might have to wait a little while, though, because yes. because we don't know what's coming down the pipeline. But we've seen, you know, the only thing that makes me think about it, right, and it's it's not comparable, all right, because the amount of people that died, it's really unfortunate, the Boeing deal. But Chipotle, talking oh, yeah. about dealing with problems, right? Yeah. Um, and let's see if this is going to go back far enough. Oh, it will. This is a fabulous comeback. It's like amazing. That's actually. it. Didn't even, uh, I just want to, yeah. I mean, it's remarkable, right? Let's put it even on a five year because talk about, look let's see that. how, look at It's been, it was so long. It I really know. was so long. I, let's put it on a 10 year. Time so to, quick. It really is because they started dealing with the E. coli in 2015 and you go from $757 down to 247 but man, oh man, once they got it back on track, yep. you go from February of 2018, 247 to now above $800 in less than two years. And they kind of had it on track, you know, a little while, but yeah. it really took the market to, to, okay. to believe them that everything was going to be back on track, growth was going to be there, profit was going to come back in, in, in completion, and, 
And I imagine that once kind of the uncertainty, you know, that's only a $22 billion company, man. That was that was a haircut yeah. down to... Just hit the revenue. Let me see sure. this thing for yeah. a second. And yeah. that's, I mean, you can see that even, you know, yeah, yeah. They, they lost some revenue. And they kind of had the same thing, right? Look at the earnings in 2015. Wow. They're crushing it. Yeah. Just like Boeing. They all disappeared. Yeah. Okay. You go from crushing earnings per share to almost losing money on some quarters. And then they, they got it back on track. And in 2020, they're going to be above where they were in 2015. And let yeah. alone, they're now pushing that type of earnings on a growth of more than like almost 40%. You're growing $1.7 billion extra in revenue versus where you were taking it in 2015. Yeah. So... You that's, know, that's you, they show that the the business plan they have, as long as the food stays safe, yes, has big spreads because yeah. those counters. That's in, that's that's the way to do business. Yeah. You you're standing up, you go and get your own food, you're coming back. Do you know what I mean? Sure, it's like definitely. okay, it's it's. You can see, look at seventeen dollars and eighty eight cents they plan on making next year. Look at the cheap jump from this year to next year. Thirteen yeah. ninety this year, seventeen eighty eight next year. They're looking yeah. at. It's almost like 50% on each one because you go from 6 to 9, you go yep. from 9 to 14, and you go from 14, a little bit slower, but 14 to 18. Still 30% almost on Huge. the earnings. Yeah. Huge number, no doubt about that. Let's go over to the British pound and see what's uh, happening over... Yeah, got a little see. pullback today. Yeah, because this thing was at 133. Yeah, 131 something now, yeah, yeah. 131.66. So they, they're going to pass something, or they did pass something, Look basically that. saying that... Slightly a little pullback. Look at that. But, you know, the other side of that, three months ago, was at 130. Sure. So, well, the 120. Yes. Wow. Okay, so yeah. that baby's pulled back. The euro... The 111, probably sideways again. Yeah, that's that's laying yeah. sideways out there. Yeah. So there's no doubt that's going to be intriguing to see how they uh, put all these deals together, because uh, I suspect you know they, they're going to have to get these deals together as quick as a uh, quick as possible. Yeah, I mean the news out there today having to do with I guess um, if if the if everything isn't worked out by the end of next year, okay. they just kind of fall off the cliff. Was what is going to get passed as a way to incentivize things maybe to get done. Next year is 2020, right? 2020, correct, yeah. yeah. Just to add before we go into it, though, yeah. that's something that can totally get changed because the people passing it are the hardcore conservative yeah. majority. But if they don't want it, they can pass it, put it on the table, try and push it as something. But then when that comes up, they have such a majority, they're going to be able to do anything almost any time they want. They can say, ah, oh, maybe we'll push a delay now again. Okay. So. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 45. Nasdaq's up two. S&Ps are up one and a half. And folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you are going to see right on the front page of the featured content our Tiger Dollar Sale. Uh, bottom line is that we do this a couple times a year. I believe this is uh, we, we double in the bonuses uh, right now. You can get up to 40% bonus. You got it, man. Buying Tiger Dollars. So it is Tuesday, this deal ends Sunday, this weekend, man, amazing. You haven't done your Christmas shopping yet? You've got eight days. Get out there and get it done. Christmas, one week from tomorrow. This sale runs through one Sunday. One week from tomorrow? This sale runs sun and Sunday. Um, last week and Sunday, you can get up to a 40% bonus. I encourage anybody who's a current subscriber, thinking about signing up for anything in the future, whether it's a newsletter, a service, webinar, you can lock in that Tiger Dollar bonus, get up to a 40% bonus on what you spend, Normally, the bonuses are 10, 15, or 20%. Those are available all year. Only a couple times a year, we bump them up. And so whether it's $500, you can get a 20% bonus. Normally, you have to spend $1,500 just to get a 20% bonus. You spend $500, you receive an additional $100 free. That's $600 for your $20. You spend $1,000, you get $300 Tiger Dollars bonus free to you. You end up with $1,300. And if you spend $1,500, you get $2,100 Tiger Dollars, a $600 Tiger Dollar bonus, 40% bonus. I encourage current subscribers, like I said, super easy. You purchase the Tiger Dollars, you go to your account, apply them to your account, they're automatically applied, and Tiger Dollars never expire. So like I said, you know, you want to try every single product comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're using Tiger Dollars, you try out, whether it's a gold report, you're not into gold, you get a money-back guarantee. You can take those Tiger Dollars, use them for anything you want throughout the year. So really, check them out. This only runs a couple times a year at most. So we always try right. and get something done during the holidays, and occasionally we might do this sale once beyond that. But uh, great deal, and I encourage everyone to check it out. And then we done. have the Morning Market Report. You're doing a Morning Market Report out here. Yeah, so, so check out the front cool. page, Morning right. Market Report, and a Market Recap, usually every night, just kind of talking about the headlines of the day. I had some action with Boeing, of course, up there today. Um, a number, scroll down. Another story we haven't talked about yet, the housing starts, uh, right. which was a big number as well in there this morning. So markets mixed to start Tuesday trading. Housing starts rise to more, more than expected with permits at a 12 and a half year high, man. Not bad. More than expected in November and permits for future home construction, 12 and a half year high. Housing starts rose 3.2% to 1.365 million units last month with the single-family construction racing to a 10-month high. That, that uh, real estate market continues to chug on, man. And Boeing. And that puts a lot of people to work. Oh, that, that's, definitely. That's, that's, there's a lot of jobs in the construction business. Definitely. Right? And this was just a two-day chart of Boeing. You see the beginning of the slide yesterday, pre-market. There's yesterday's action. Ended about 328. Actually made it to a low pre-market this morning of 320 on the price of Boeing, excuse me. And then, you know, every day in here, I've just got kind of the markets that I'm looking at. You got your S&P, you got the gold contract, what it's doing. You can see the time frame overnight right into the morning session. You got crude oil in there, crude having quite a run. We get EIA tomorrow. 
You got your bonds and you got your notes and uh, Sweet. and then of course check out those tiger dollars, man. Yeah, and then, staying on Boeing, right? Yeah, because this is pretty wild. This totally makes sense, though. Airbus yep. can't build jets fast enough. And that's why, you know, you kind of reference, maybe Boeing's a goodbye, man, because they're not going away. And that's yeah. the thing, you know, it's because... Well, they, you know what gets interesting, too, is that we'll go through this first, but then I'll bring up Delta Airlines, and I'll show you the difference. Delta didn't buy any 737s. They bought Airbus. Okay. And then pull up Southwest, and you're going to see the difference in the two airlines. It's so dramatic, it's like sick. Yeah, because Southwest, and that uh, part of that Boeing story that I referenced, Southwest now pushing the 737 MAX back all the way, I believe, to middle of April, where okay. it's off their schedule. Okay. And that is where, if you really want to look to where there's a possibility that air, airplane gets back into rotation, right. look to the airlines, because right. they're being a little bit more realistic than right. I think Boeing is on their estimations. Yeah, so Airbus has their A320neo. Right, yeah. that is the plane that kind of their new plane that would compete, <clears throat> and the so-called stretch versions of the Neo have sparked an order frenzy as airlines snap them up to replace costly twin aisle planes on longer routes or cram in seats on shorter legs. But to achieve that flexibility, Airbus, Airbus has had to offer a wide range of cabin layouts that's made assembly far more complex. Not what you want to hear, man, as you have an opportunity to just be delivering planes as fast as you can. Yeah. Slower build rates on the top-priced A321 variant meant that the European company needs to lift deliveries 75% this month compared with November to meet full-year production targets. It's a vital challenge not only to consolidate its advantage over flailing Boeing, but also to maximize returns from its most expensive narrow bodies as demand peaks for even more, liquid, more lucrative wide-body models. Yeah, they, uh, you want to talk about logistics, right? Maybe they may yeah. need to get uh, Amazon's man Dave Clark in there to, to, to work on what's going on in their facilities because that's quite a boost, boost by 75% month on month to somehow right. hit your target in, in an right. industry and, like that. And it looks like they're going to deliver, so they're going to deliver 860, Yes. Um, but that's 20 fewer than the initial goal. Now, that's pretty intense, man, because... It, this is their chance. I agree. This is like, you know. That's, you don't get many opportunities where you have uh, a duopoly that run the world right. of airliners, and you have one company that is in a lot of trouble, as I, they should I, be, I, for, totally. for how they acted, for their planes, for the safety, and you can't even produce what you said you wanted to produce, let alone maybe being able to overproduce, right? Yep. Wild, man. Yeah. I heard something today talking about just uh, the GDP, the overall GDP impact from a company like Boeing. It makes sense. Halting the production yeah. of the 737, a full percent. Wow. <clears throat> which is remarkable. And it's not just yeah. Boeing. It's down the line. It's the suppliers. It's yeah. everybody. It's then the money. Those people have to spend um, a full percentage of GDP. I mean, it's, right. <clears throat> it's, it's a big ticket <clears throat> item. You're right. You know? Right. So if we look at Delta, you can see, like, this is the Delta chart, trading at 59.24. Yes. You know, right next to all-time highs. Yeah. And look at the year it's had. You put it on such a long term, but even yeah. the year it's had, man, from 45 up to 60, 33% yeah. this year alone. And then love, L-U-V, I think. Yep, you're right. V. There we go. Love. They're not getting much love lately, no. man. We take this. A little bit longer time frame. Yeah. That's not that bad, actually. That's, that's, right? I mean, no, not as bad as I thought it might have been. No, right. and that's why I kind of zoomed back. We're looking yeah. at we're looking at 15 years, and this story's been going on for only like Oh, I know, 10, I know. Yeah, I mean, but the, 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 it's yeah. not next to the highs, but it's pretty, it's, well, let's see, how far that Well, that's what we're, we're, we're skewing things a lot, I think. Okay. From put, Let's put these on two-year charts and see where we are now, okay? Because you go two-year chart even, just back it up. Two years ago, we're sitting at 65, we're sitting at 55. The December low was 44, and we're at 54. Not that bad, but I think maybe the story started here. We'll see, you know, even from September, you go from 62. And now let's see for, let's put Delta Airlines on the two-year, because it's been quite a 15 years for the airline industry overall. Yeah, That's the sure. reason why, you know, they're for not sure. going bankrupt anymore. You put Delta on a two-year, and talk about a consolidation. Man. Yeah. Um, Big yeah. consolidation, but near the top of the consolidation. It sure is. It yeah. sure is. But, yeah, if anything, you know, we'll see because love still at the mercy of that oh, max, yeah. man. Yeah. No doubt. And then the question is, are they going to get pushback of people getting on the planes?
I agree. Right. I can't wait. Right. Those marketing companies must be chopping at the bit to rename that right. plane. Stay right there, folks. Tom and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 49, Dow's up like 4, S&P's up 1.5. And uh, are our patriots... Uh, you want to talk about it? Let's yeah, talk about this it. this is pretty heavy, man. <laughs> Spygate 2.0. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It'll be interesting to see what happens, man. So uh, this has to do with the potential rule violation of filming another team's sideline. I guess they're really... In practice, right? Is no, that... this is a game. Oh. That's what... So they... You're not allowed to be filming other teams' sidelines. I'm sure you can pick up a lot, right, for sidelines, watching coaches, watching, watching okay. um, teams coming in and out. You're not yeah. allowed to be filming those sidelines. And so what they did is they had a, an advance. So you have advanced scouts that are advanced teams that are, okay. you can go to the game, yeah. all right? You can be there. You just can't be filming everything of, of, of these other teams. So they were supposedly doing a documentary on this advanced scout or something like this. Yeah. So they were supposed to be getting coverage of the advanced scout. And they basically caught them like just filming the other sideline. You know, I'm a Patriots during fan, the I'll game? say it. Is that what's yes, going on? during the game. So yes, they beat so them 43 to 13. No, no, okay, so you're going back and forth. This was the week before the game with oh, them. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I see. Okay. Because so the advance playing someone else. The advanced scout. No, no. So let's back it up. So okay. the advanced scout goes to the next week's game. Okay. So, who 
whoever the Patriots played before this week, yeah. that's when all of this happens. They send the advance scout to go watch Cincinnati play the prior week before the Patriots right. go. So that's when they filmed Cincinnati the week ahead of time right. on their bench. And then, um, wow. But the video is pretty damning, man. I saw it yesterday. I said to you, I'll show you and get afterwards. And they had Cincinnati security. They basically caught him. They watch it. And the security's going, where's the advance scout? You were supposed to be filming the advance scout for footage. And all you're filming literally is from the press box, the Cincinnati bench. And you, you hear the audio. I should have asked, but anyway, we'll see what happens. Stay right there, folks. We can think of some coming up next. And I'm at Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes. Wait, we'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Bam! Go get him, folks.